my name is Corrado Giannini, and I work for um, a scientific uh, research institute called ISI Foundation. And I'm going to present you a um, multi-platform desktop application that we developed within a, a line of research on computational epidemiology. Uh, so what is computational epidemiology? To try to keep it uh, very simple, we can see it uh, as uh, uh, the design of uh, mathematical models uh, together with their uh, numerical implementations uh, done in order to study and describe uh, the spreading of infectious diseases. And the goals of modern uh, computational epidemiology are to perform realistic scenario analysis of the spreading of infectious disease and to be able to make predictions about the uh, arrival time, about the figures, that is, incidence or prevalence of the disease, <coughs> and to try to simulate the effects of intervention measures that are meant to um, mitigate the, the impact of, um, of an, an epidemic. So, um, within this context, our research group over the past years developed a model called GLIM, the Global Epidemic and Mobility Model, that is a global scale uh, stochastic metapopulation model where the dynamics of the disease within each subpopulation is described by a compartmental model. That means that uh, individuals are divided into classes or compartments uh, according to their status in respect to the disease. Uh, it's important to say that this model is uh, based on actual data. We use data about the distribution of population all over the world and about the mobility of uh, humans through the alien transportation network and, um, and commuting between neighboring regions. Uh, the, the model proved to be um, good, let, let me say so, in uh, predicting the, the arrival times of the uh, 2009 uh, swine flu uh, pandemic uh, in the um, countries of the northern hemisphere with several months in advance. But since then, the model has uh, evolved, is in continuous development, and has been improved, uh, and, um, and some features have been added. So, once the model has been uh, tested, we started to think that we would like to build a software tool that could uh, um, be used by, by, by those people that would benefit from being able to perform. Uh, uh, global scale realistic simulations of the spreading of infectious disease without being uh, um, having the resources or the skill to build a model, uh, implement it, and run it, and so on. So we wanted in, in our uh, dreams to build a, a, a tool that should be simple to use for an epidemiologist, but uh, uh, still retain the full uh, power of the, uh, the realistic model that we, are, that we developed. So the target users for our um, software are mainly policymakers, people working in health institutions that uh, have to take decisions when there is an epidemic outbreak, and of course teachers and students for epidemiology classes. Well, this is, uh, I'm going very fast over this. Um, this software is a client server software. Uh, the server has a component actually implementing the, the, the Glim model and the proxy that deals with the client uh, connections and so on. And the client has been uh, rewritten recently in uh, using Qt. And, uh, well, I have to say that uh, we are not professional uh, Qt developers. We are actually new buys in the Qt world. But um, this client uh, um, uh, lets user uh, define their simulations, define the computational model, specify all the parameters of the simulation, then submit the simulation to the server, and uh, retrieve the output data and visualize it uh, to uh, multiple uh, visualization options, and of course, download the output data locally for further analysis. <clears throat> so we use the standard Qt uh, components uh, um, for the model builder and the simulation builder. Uh, we use the XML and SVG processing. We use the network uh, APIs for the communication with the Glimvis server. And we used uh, Qt Quick 2 um, together with uh, an external uh, graphic library called OpenSyngraph that probably many of you know, uh, to uh, realize the visualization components. Um, okay. Um, very briefly, how we did this, we, there is, we used a standard QML window um, that includes a custom uh, Qt item object that responds to the update of the scene graph by uh, returning a um, QSD geometry node. And the, the open scene graph uh, toolkit uh, draws the visualization component on a frame buffer object and um, re renders this, uh, this visualization component on the texture that is then applied as a material to the geometry node. In this way, we were able to include these, uh, these visualizations within the QML window. So, 
Now is uh, the tricky part. Let's hope uh, that I can do something like uh, oops, uh, this. Okay, so this is a bit stretched, but uh, this is the um, um, manager, the simulation manager interface. I want to show you briefly. Uh, this is the simulation builder where the user can define a comportmental model like this. So each of these boxes are. Uh, oof, let me, okay. Represent compartments. So it's possible to add multiple of them. I'll do a very simple model now, but. Uh, in principle, you can have uh, like 20 different compartments. You can uh, also do something like that. And simply drawing this, uh, something like that, you can, uh, this means that when an individual belonging to a susceptible compartment comes in contact with a, an individual belonging to an infectious one, it has a certain probability that is defined by a transition rate beta to move to the infectious compartment. And this uh, software lets you define variables, something like this, uh, and it's possible to add uh, other kind of transitions. This is a spontaneous decay after a certain amount of time ruled by a probability defined by another variable. Variables can depend one on the others, something like this. Uh, and so there is a consistency check. Uh, how many times do we have? Like uh, two? Okay. Okay. Um, so, with this, uh, you can define, there is a consistency checker, I told you, so um, software checks that the model is formally consistent, and then you can uh, specify uh, all the other parameters of the simulation, like, for example, the starting, the origin, you, you can say it's like in Berlin, or something like that. Once the, the, the simulation is complete, now I skip this part, uh, you can submit it to the server and, uh, and retrieve the output data. <coughs> I show you, for example, an existing simulation that I've already run. Okay, this is the main uh, stretched uh, uh, output visualization option. It's a dynamical map where the uh, evolution over time of the disease is shown. You can see, for example, these arrows. Those are um, infectious individuals that are traveling to a new geographical region, so potentially spreading the disease. There is this color scale that represents the number of uh, um, new cases uh, uh, that are appearing all over the world. And of course it's possible uh, well, to zoom in uh, and to drag uh, the map. And then we have what is, uh, well, anyway, you can have some information about the, the, all the census areas that are built around uh, the major transportation apps. Um, we have other options like to change the background map, uh, we can uh, show the distribution of population or something like that. Um, these charts here uh, display the, um, the new cases and cumulative cases uh, uh, on a different um, geographical scales. For example, I can choose a single city and, oops, and I can show something like that. I can move in time and so on. And then very briefly, because I think I'm running out of time. Just want to show you another visualization option. Okay, this is um, a graph representation of the, net, uh, of the airline transportation network that is uh, currently centered around the city that I've chosen as, a, as the origin for the epidemic outbreak. And in this case, you can see that uh, um, it depends on the disease, uh, on how much uh, fast spreads and, and other options, but uh, generally speaking, you can see that uh, the spreading on this graph is uh, somehow concentric, like a, a wave starting from the center. Uh, and this is, uh, of course, not the case uh, uh, if you consider uh, real geographical distances, because uh, uh, sometimes you might have, uh, this is something you can see, for example, at the beginning, if I stop, okay, if I stop uh, and then I move, uh, the geographic representation, you can see that maybe uh, places that are far away in the world have been uh, infected at the same time, uh, while uh, they are, uh, but places that are much closer to the epidemic uh, origin are, are still uh, uh, not infected. Um, okay, also here you can uh, have multiple options, but I think that uh, I can, oh, sorry. 
you can zoom in and let's say that's it so let me jump back here and thank you at this link you can uh, find uh, other information about the model and about the software we are actually looking for a cute developer so contact me if you are interested to move into Turing um, thank you again <laughs>